Oh, that character is pixelated. So this video, despite not looking very great, really helped launch my career back in 2013. The whole thing is about people's hair wrestling each other. These things are as gross looking as I remember. And that's my mouth on these characters too. I realized I never officially announced on this channel that I left my job as an animator to run Popcross Studios full time, which is super exciting that it's gotten to a point where this channel can actually be my career, but it's also a little bit bittersweet because it meant leaving my job as an animator, illustrator, and motion graphics designer for The Score Esports which is a really awesome YouTube channel. I'm gonna link a whole bunch of their videos in the description below and in the cards because the whole team there is really hardworking, especially my good friend, Miles Hackett, who's the person I worked with the most. He's one of the hosts of one of the shows over there. I'll link his Twitter and everything. And he's the reason for a lot of the really weird stuff in my demo reel. So go follow him on Twitter and watch his episodes. But now that I've left my job working for other people as an animator and illustrator to work for myself, I thought it'd be kind of interesting to go back through my career as an animator and illustrator and look at some of the really weird stuff that I've been paid to animate in my career. I'm gonna tear apart some of my old stuff because a lot of the old stuff I've done is really not so great looking. But talking about low quality animation is a good way to jump into our first project because as proud of it as I was at the time, it's pretty rough looking now. Unions uh, in the 1960s started taking on the issue of sex discrimination in a really big way. Uh, one of the reasons why they did that was because women started becoming a bigger part of the workforce and therefore a bigger part of union membership. Okay, so this wasn't my first job in animation, but this was the first big animation project that I was paid for back in 2013. And just the graphic design on it is not nice. The text isn't well laid out. Oh, that character is pixelated. If you look at the silhouette of this character, she's super pixelated. I must have masked it out in After Effects, made it too small, and then scaled it up. And because it wasn't a vector image, it just got really pixelated looking. Also, if you listen to what the guy is saying and are reading the text, the text is coming on a little bit too late for typography animation. Airline advertising in the 60s and the 70s very much played on that image. For something like this, the text should come on about two frames before what the person is saying. So your brain has time to read it while the person says it. If it's coming on after, then people are hearing it, then reading it, and it just, it, it doesn't really work. Also, everything is just moving too fast. It's so, it's way too swooshy and not fluid at all. Oh my gosh. I get what I was trying to do, having the A turn into the hair on this character, but because it dips out a little bit and doesn't flow right into it, it kind of looks like she's bald on top of her head and then has hair starting around here. The airlines had a rule that after three months pregnant, uh, you couldn't work anymore. The union filed a grievance saying, well, this is really just about the image of uh, women and that the, the airlines wanted to show women as young, single, available, and, and eroticizing essentially their own workers and exploiting them. What the airlines did is they responded by saying, well, no, this is about safety. And then I was starting to run out of ideas for how to make the text turn into stuff. So at this part, I just had the text come on in a big block in tons of different types of fonts. And like, I, I just wasn't a very good graphic designer back then. And in motion graphics design, you have to be a good graphic designer because you have to lay stuff out so that it would look nice as a still image and then also looks good in movement. But what's funny looking at this now, even though I think it's kind of gross looking now, A, I got paid good money for this, and B, it got picked up by a bunch of different places after we put it out. It got posted onto Upworthy and even a couple TV stations and random places around the world picked it up and showed it on TV. So this video, despite not looking very great, really helped launch my career back in 2013. And these first two things were both things I made for a company called Divo Babin Productions. It was a really great place to work. I worked through all through university. And this next one that we're gonna look at is probably the weirdest thing I made for them that I don't think we even ended up releasing. But I still got paid for it. Sunday, 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 the two biggest names in Canadian politics face off in the hairiest smackdown of the century. Hair gel will fly when these two titans get tangled in the ring. 
So this was supposed to be like a political satire thing about when uh, the Canadian election was happening between Harper and Trudeau. I mean, there were other politicians involved, but they were the two heavy hitters. We we talked a lot about their the differences between their hair. So I pitched an idea where we do a wrestling match between their hair. And then we even had Donald Trump come in. And I think the reason we didn't end up releasing this is because when I wrote this video, I thought Obama was bald. Tune in next week to watch Donald Trump's legendary mop go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Obama's... Oh, uh, oh, uh. So the joke was supposed to be like, oh, haha, he can't participate because he doesn't have hair. But he did have hair. So the joke didn't really work. Not that it really played that well as a joke in the first place, but after looking up that, it, you know, really didn't work. So back in 2014, while I was still working for Dovo Babbin Productions, I made a demo reel with what I considered all my best stuff. Oh, why is, why is that so choppy looking? Oh, that's weird. Anyway, I'm curious now what I thought was my best work back in 2014. Oh. Why is that so blurry looking? Oh, I like that. That's kind of fun. I don't know why my hand is so orange. This was another project. That was a freelance project I'd done. A lot of this stuff is just kind of quickly made motion graphics project for Devo Babbin Productions. Oh, this was a class project where I took comic panels and made them parallax animated. I, I don't mind how some of this looks. I mean, oh, fix it in post. This was gonna be a YouTube channel my friends and I in film school were starting. I think it's up. We put a couple videos out on it, but not too much. Fandom Face Off. This was a VFX series I wanted to get off the ground a long time ago, and we did a Harry Potter vs. Edward Cullen video. That was kind of fun to work on. I still like some of the stuff I made in it. Oh, this guy here, Ollie Del Mastro, is a good friend of mine, and he is an awesome musician. I'll link his Instagram in the description. He's got so much good music. I'm gonna do a video with him in the near future, but he's really great. Oh, and then we've got here another good friend of mine, Rene Arsenault. I'll link his Instagram in the description below. He's a cinematographer and photographer, and he's absolutely fantastic. I also plan on doing a video with him in the near future. Oh, and then we've got some special effects that I was kind of proud of. I like that, I think looking back at this, even though it's not gorgeous looking, I like that I put the reflection on the table, a slight reflection. I don't know if that's how it would actually look, but I think that's kind of cool. Uh, that's definitely not how it would actually look, but I, I think that's a nice idea that I added that extra little bit of detail. Oh, and then this was for an Avengers short film that I was working on where I was playing Thor's son. You can see in this shot where I landed, the clouds move in the sky between switching from the background plate to the part where I actually jumped and landed on the ground. I hit it a little bit with the camera wiggle, so it wasn't too noticeable. I think that's actually on this channel under a, my old unlisted videos. I have a whole bunch of my old special effects projects unlisted on the channel if you want to go back and check them out. My first actual job in animation was as an intern at a special effects company in 2012, but I didn't get to do that much visually interesting stuff because I was just a small piece in a big team. But anyway, the next one's actually not something I was paid for, it was a school project, but at the time it was my favorite piece of art that I'd ever made. It was an animated short film called The Button, and I'm curious to look at it now and see if I still think it's as great as I thought it was back then. A big part of the problem with this movie, I think, thinking back about it now, is the background design is just very uninteresting. The character being very basic is fine because, you know, it's it's an animated short. I wasn't that great at frame-by-frame -frame animation yet, so I needed a very, very simple character. But just the backgrounds are really boring looking, especially because he was supposed to be going through a whole bunch of really interesting alternate dimensions. I mean, I was limited by what I could actually achieve at the time. I wasn't great at illustrating environments. I, 
I'm still not amazing at it now, but I'm better at it now. And I kind of just had to work with what I was able to do at the time. Oh, this part's kind of cool. We've got, I, I, as an animation reference, I put Gertie the Dinosaur in the background, which is an animated film made by Winsor McKay, who is like the godfather of animation. This was made back in 1914. And I, I think I actually traced Gertie for this part, but I kind of just put that in there. I knew I wanted to have something dinosaur related. So I was like, gotta throw Gertie in the background as an animation reference. Cause early on in animation school, everybody learns about Winsor McKay and Gertie the dinosaur. Oh, and then we've got a dinosaur in here that I, I think I was kind of limited on time. So I made the T-Rex not frame by frame hand-drawn animation. I built him in After Effects, rigged him up and animated him like that, which is how I do most of my animation nowadays. I don't really do frame by frame anymore. But this next sequence was the part that I was most proud of. He gets roared at by the dinosaur, flies back, swoops around underwater, lands on the ground, volcano, and then he just goes through a whole bunch of different dimensions that if you actually stop and look at them, you can tell I spent less time on them. Like the buildings in the background for this meteor part are just, just basic silhouettes. Actually, I guess that background might actually be one of the more detailed ones of the batch. This alien here is very heavily inspired by Weird Science, which I was reading a whole bunch back in those days. And I I, I, I do kind of like the design. I don't love the animation on it, but I think it's kind of cool looking. It bothers me now looking at this that the inside of his mouth is white. I don't know why I did that. This joke, I remember lots of people having a different reaction to it about if the character was in another dimension and then smashed the button, just one that looked like his, or if he'd accidentally teleported another creature into his dimension. I'd intended it to be, he smashed the button and was in another dimension and I'd wanted to animate a bigger background where you could see a whole bunch of an alien civilization, but I just, again, wasn't good enough at drawing backgrounds to do that, so I didn't do it. I still like this enough, but it does feel dated now. I know I can do a lot better stuff nowadays. The limited amount of gold in each avatar world meant that people exchanged real money for other players' gold if they were running short. Oh, yikes. These things are as gross looking as I remember. And that's my mouth on these characters too. So the main work that I did for the score esports was animations for a series called What Is, which was created by my good friend Miles. And it's a very informative show, but it's also really funny and goofy and weird. And a lot of the time, Miles would come to me with just some of the weirdest ideas for animations. And then I would take those and try to make them even weirder. And the result was just some really bizarre stuff and some of the most fun work that I've ever done. But, I remember while I was working on this, I got partway through the first animation, and there's a few of these animations in this video, and I, I just thought to myself, oh, oh gosh, these are so weird, I should reframe, do something else, but I was under a deadline, I had to get it done, so I just had to keep going with this visual style, and it's... Ugh. I think the most liked comment on this video is what is up with those weird animations. Some people compared it to Annoying Orange, and some other people compared it to this old Quebec animated show. I don't remember what it's called, but I'll put a clip up of it. But yeah, this is one of the most unsettling things I've ever animated. All right, this next one is actually something I was very proud of and am still pretty proud of. It was a series I pitched to the Score Esports that it only ran for about four episodes because our audience wasn't super into it, but it was kind of like a death battle type show, but where we take esports characters and have them battle either other esports characters or other pop culture characters. The stuff that I learned how to do while working on this series has very much been an influence on how I do a lot of my personal work. This is from my favorite episode. As I said, we did four episodes, but this one was Iron Man vs. Samus. And there are so many animations that I love looking back on. I got to animate a whole bunch of different Iron Man suits. And this, I think I was working on the series for about five months as we were building the initial assets and making the first few episodes, which was really awesome of them to have faith in a project that I pitched and let me animate something that was very outside of our usual stuff. The part where Iron Man switches into the Hulkbuster suit is probably my favorite part, because I started, 
having him smash up some of the environment, which was very time consuming. Once I built all the assets, I had to animate these episodes in about two weeks. And there was sometimes up to five minutes of animation in an episode. So it was, it was really intense work but I had to develop a lot of workarounds to be able to animate this project quickly. And I became a way better animator in the five months I spent working on this than any other time in my career. But yeah, if you wanna see animations from all four episodes, I'll link them in the description below, along with some of my favorite episodes from What Is. But I think to finish up, we should look at one of the weirdest animations I did in What Is that involved peanut butter, feces, and an explosion. Shaw's costume consisted of 18 pounds of chunky peanut butter and a can of corn that he smeared all over his nearly naked body. I think it's probably better if I don't even tell the story because the way Miles tells it in the actual episode is even better. It's a story about one of the weirdest cosplays to ever happen. And there's another bizarre animation in here later on. To make matters worse, he ended up clogging his hotel's pipes causing thousands of dollars of damage when they exploded and flooded the building with sewage and peanut butter. <laughs> oh, it's so, I added those little yellow flecks in there to try and be like corn. Again, I don't want to tell the whole story because it's really great in the actual episode. I'll put it in the cards and link it below. But yeah, this right here, one of the weirder things. Oh, also you can see in the hallway, as a reference to the main Marvel universe, the Marvel 616, whenever I need a number in an animation I'm working on, I usually just put 616 in there. I don't really know why, but it became a recurring thing. If you go watch a bunch of the Score Esports videos that I animated on, you'll probably see it in there a few times. But yeah, I'll quickly flash through some other weird animations that I did for them. I'll link the episodes below. Basically just go binge watch the whole What Is series because even ignoring my animations, it's a really great series. And I did animate a whole bunch of weird stuff and Miles and a bunch of other people work really hard on it and all the other videos over at the Score Esports. It's easily been my favorite job I've ever had besides obviously working on this YouTube channel, but it's hard to beat that. But yeah, I owe a lot of who I am as an artist, animator, illustrator to my time working for them. They gave me a lot of creative freedom. It was really great. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to check out Monday's episode, which is going to be me taking detailed video game characters and drawing them as cartoon characters. And be sure to watch a whole bunch of my other animations and illustration videos. This channel is my job now, so it really helps out when people like and share and all that kind of stuff. And I hope you enjoy my other videos. I'm excited to be putting more time and work into this channel now because it's really fun making all this stuff. And don't worry, there's still gonna be another Illustrator Reacts video next week. But that's all for today. I'm Christian Pearson. This is Popcross Studios, home of the nerdiest art videos on YouTube, and I will see you all in the next one. Goodbye, everybody.